in a U.S. Treasury bond futures contract, the short position is given a choice, a basket of available for delivery bonds to fulfill the contract. The cheapest to deliver is simply the bond that minimizes the net cost of the short position in fulfilling their obligation. The context here is that we have an exchange-traded futures contract where the underlying commodity happens to be a U.S. Treasury bond. Because it's a futures contract, there's a long position and a short position. The counterparty who takes the long position I've represented as the gray character. The counterparty who takes a short position I've represented as the orange character. When we get to the delivery month, the counterparty who has taken the short position in this futures contract is obligated to deliver a bond in exchange for payment. In the previous video, I explained that this short position has a choice of a bond, available bonds in a basket of bonds for delivery, not just a single bond. Why is that? If the short position could only use, select one bond, then the, all of the futures contract would depend only on that bond, and there would be a liquidity issue with that bond, and constantly the threat of a squeeze. So for good reason, the short is given a choice. And in the previous video, I explained the calculation of the conversion factor. And given that the different bonds have different inherent values, the conversion factor approximately equalizes them in terms of the price received. But it doesn't do it exactly. And for that reason, there is a cheapest to deliver concept where we assume that the short position is self-interested and will minimize their net cost in fulfilling their obligation of the short. Of course they will. So the cheapest to deliver concept exists because the choices due to the conversion factor will be pretty close to each other. In other words, the best, the second best choice will be pretty close to the first best choice and so on, but they won't be exactly equal. And the cheapest to deliver is just the idea that this short is going to go through each of these and select the one that minimizes their net cost. So I'm using John Hull's example 6-1 here and starting with the first bond in the basket of avail available for delivery. Right, notice I'm distinguishing. We have a basket of available for delivery and we're trying to identify, but we're trying to identify the cheapest to deliver. So if we look at bond one, I have bond one in the diagram. The short here needs to go purchase the bond first before delivering it, and they will pay, of course, the full price. And that full price is the $99.50 quoted price plus accrued interest, right? Full price is the quote price, AKA the flat price plus the accrued interest. They will pay that, and then they will deliver the bond, and what will they will receive? They will receive the Futures settlement price, and we're just assuming here, following John Hull's example, that the future settlement price happens to be $93.25. That's going to be constant. However, we, the, what the short position receives when delivering this bond is that settlement price multiplied by the conversion factor applicable to the bond delivered. So if the first bond is delivered here, it has a conversion factor of 1.0382, it gets multiplied by the settlement price. And so you can see that is why the cheapest to deliver concept is really a net cost concept, where in the case of this first bond, the short position is paying the $99.50 and so that's a cost and then they're receiving you can see here the 9325 but multiplied by the conversion factor and so that that is cost that is benefit and i think of this as net cost in this case of the first bond it's two dollars and 69 cents now if the i have this dynamically set up and then if I go to the second bond, it has a quoted price of 143.50, and so the short position will pay a much higher price to obtain that bond. 
but they will receive, in this case, the settlement price times appropriately a much higher conversion factor, such that the net cost in that case is only $1.87. And I won't do the third example because it's higher, And but you can see the cheapest to deliver is simply which of those three bonds in delivery has the lowest net cost. It's bond two at $1.87. And so I did say that the short in obtaining this bond goes out to purchase. Of course, they pay the full price. That, so you can see that's quoted bond price plus accrued interest. But they will receive, strictly speaking, they receive the settlement plus the conversion factor plus accrued interest. And so you can see the accrued interest, as John Hull shows in his formula, washes out. So that's why we don't have the, that's why we don't need the accrued interest in the ultimate formula because it eliminates. So that's the cheapest deliver concept. It's the bond among the available for delivery bonds that has the lowest net cost and is a choice as reflected by the choice of the short in, in optimizing their self-interest to minimize that net cost. So I have the spreadsheet as you can download if you take a, if you'd like to take a closer look. If this video is helpful, also please up subscribe to the channel. Thank you.